First of all, I'm Jennifer Shahadi, um, and I am a longtime friend of our special guest today. Her name is Laura Smith. She's a national master. She is an incredible um, teacher. She's coached so many great initiatives for U.S. chess women from our girls clubs to our women's groups. And she's also now a coach for Chessable, which is really cool. And she did a fantastic course there called Forcey Moves for Beginners. Now, I know a lot of players in this are more intermediate or even advanced. Mm -hmm. Um, Depends on how you define beginner, intermediate, and advanced. But the point is, this is a crucial topic, no matter how good you are at chess. And I think it's an absolutely brilliant concept for a course, Laura, because of all that. So really excited that uh, you came up with this idea and that you agreed to talk to us about it. Now, um, don't forget that there is going to be a blitz tournament, mini tournament, so just like three rounds at the end of the session. And we are going to have a few course giveaways to people who play in it. So you'll get a chance to see Laura's course if you haven't already. I uh, will hand the floor over to Laura now. Oh, Jen, that was so lovely. Thank you so much. And I I just want to say thank you, Jen, for helping me back in the the early pandemic, um, joining the U.S. Women's Beginner Group and teaching with you was just so fun and it helped me so much. And now I get to um, meet all of you today. Remember, ask any questions. This is for you. Don't be shy. There's chat. You can unmute. And should I get started? Yeah, yeah. Start sharing your screen. Yay. Okay. Hey, Melissa. Yay. All right. How's it looking on everyone's end? You see the first, let's go actually to this position. Let's do this one first. All right. We have a little poll, right, Jen? Yes, we do have a poll for this one. Yes, for this okay. very kind question. of a warm up. I know I'm in New York and it's 10 in the morning. I've been up for a while, but I'm still getting my chest brain ready. So yeah. I know for some of you, it's in the afternoon. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's get some warm up here. It, it This game was played by one of my friends. He submitted it to me and it got into my chessable course. I do want to say this chessable course couldn't be possible without a lot of my students. Some are here today. Great to see you. And online, getting to know amazing people. So yeah, he's playing this position as white. And um, I want you to think all I'm going to say is the premise of the course as Jen was saying forcing moves so there are checks captures and threats right so I want you to think here what you would play see and I'll keep an eye on the chat oh I see ah. I'm getting direct messages with some good answers come up with some good um forcing moves some checks some captures some threats and then if you saw the first move I'm not going to say what it is can you try to calculate the whole variation? Remember, just because you make a move doesn't mean your opponent's forced to respond the way you think. So I'm calculating two here with the first move a lot of people are seeing and then predict the best response. All right, raise your hand if you want to explain what you did and why. Love it. Um, let's see. Um, anybody want to explain their answer? Oh, come on. <laughs> Don't be you like. Remember, mistakes are proof you're learning the more you participate and try. Hi. So I ended up, I saw Bishop takes H, um, H6. I, from what I can see, I think that's, I mean, I was, what I was thinking would happen was the king would move or the rook would take. And then following that, um, since it's a direct check, if the king moves to, either oh and that's actually if the king moves that's a variation i didn't see the king actually has um up to e7 so i figured there was some sort of catch there but the idea was that after bishop takes um the king moves up to um e7 and then queen takes on f7 so i didn't answer immediately because i did i figured there was something more to it um <laughs> so yeah now the king is going to take the knight and looking at that we we have pawn checks but yeah someone else may have found the answer to that so i'll let them speak Nice. Excellent. Yeah, like knight takes up seven might also be interesting, but it isn't as powerful at all. So very good. So check. So like, we'll go for that. 
And just like if you're a beginner watching, can if rook takes bishop, it's queen takes f7 checkmate, right? So we'll go to your move, Laurel. Very good. And then, yeah. So what would you, would Laurel or anyone else want to walk me through the next moves? I can do this one, right? You said queen takes f7 check. We get the king out. All right. I don't know why those arrows are there. Let's see. Okay. And then let's see, like, do you see any forcing moves here that can conceal the deal kind of thing? So there are a few checks that the Lee Chess is showing. What would you do here? Can you calculate the checkmate? All right. I see a hand raised, v uh, Vita. Uh, yeah. So I think what I might want to do is bishop f4 check. Okay. Then um, e5. Mm-hmm. Bishop takes, knight yes. takes, and then c5, checkmate. Good job. And I really appreciate how you walked through that whole variation, right? You didn't just get stuck on one move. Very good. Okay. Wow. And then look at this beautiful checkmate. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see c5 for a while, but, but that's... Isn't that crazy yeah. how all the squares are guarded? Nice job. I'm just going to stop sharing for one second so I can fix my study. All right, let me just do this. I love that mate. That's a really nice mate. What game is that? That game was, was that your game, Laura, or no? This was from one of my um, student, like, well, he's my friend from online and he comes to a lot of my streams, Watson, and he added this to, um, and I was like, this is a really nice example. And he was able to beat a strong player. Yeah, I love mates with pawns. They're the best mates, aren't they? Right? Very, probably not the rarest, but probably bishops are, but it's still beautiful. Oh, Maureen says David and Goliath mate. I love that. Ooh, I love it. The queen and the, and the pawn mating together. Very nice. All right. Now I'm going to go to our next one. Uh, while you do that, in the chat, what do you guys think is the rarest piece to give checkmate? Well, obviously, we know the most common is the queen, right? So what's the Ooh. rarest piece to give checkmate? Yeah, 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 the king. That's right, you guys, yeah, absolutely, the king. And, and, but it's not impossible, right? Why is it not <laughs> impossible? How can there be a checkmate move with the king? Interesting, ooh, I like that question. Discovery, says Laurel. Uh, yeah, exactly, that's probably the, the main way. There's one other way. Discover checkmate, discover checkmate, yeah. One other way, come on. <laughs> you know this. What's the other way that the king can give a checkmate? Not a discovery, but okay. I'll let you guys think about that. I'll get you. I'll let you guys move on. Yeah, Deepa says castling. Yeah. Castling. Yeah. Ooh. Are any of those in your play like a champion new book, Jen? I don't know if I have a king checkmate in my because I, I mean, I have a lot of the most of the games that I have are from real games. Yeah. Uh, so of course it's rare, but I do have a I do have one chapter on chess problems. So maybe I should add one in. Ooh, good question. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. The creating never ends. Okay, sorry about the little glitch, but we're, it should be good. Is my uh, screen okay now? Yes, it looks fine. Okay. Too. So. so this is another example. And this game I played when I was not Laura Smith, but when I was Laura Ross as a little girl in, um, I want to say, Aura Pesa Del Mar. Might bring back some memories. Jen, did you play there? No, I, I missed that. I think I was, I turned 18 just when they started oh. coming in there, yeah. All right, so I probably got to be on, in Cannes, France. Were you there? I don't know. One of our trips. But anyway, so here I'm playing um a, a girl from Spain. Um, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing her name right. Leia Ortega Garcia, and I'm playing the white pieces. My king is not doing great, but hers isn't either. It's interesting how we, you know, as you get better, Everyone always says when you're beginning, right? You got to castle your king. And then I think the group we have today, you 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 all are really advancing. And I you don't have to castle every game, right? So it's almost like whose king is worse, not whose is better. So here my king isn't castled, but my opponent's king is stuck in the middle. So white to move, there's lots going on here, right? It's open, it's got a lot of captures and checks. So, you know, take a moment and think what would you play here? white to move and see if you can um, calculate further even if you think you got your first move right as you get better it's so important to to start seeing obviously as many moves ahead as you can
And remember, um, some captures lead to your opponent can capture back. So make sure it's forcing enough. And we got an answer from um, Veda. Um, uh, Veda, do you want to, anyone else? Let's see. Oh, Siri just entered. It's good Hi. to see you, Siri. It's been a while. Um, let's see. Um, Veda, do you want to answer? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, what immediately kind of stuck out to me was Rook takes D7 good because... Job. If the knight captures, then uh, the queen on e4 is undefended, and uh, white can take there. And if the king moves to c8, then my impulse would probably be to go rook d4 um, and do a discovery that way. Um, there might be something else, maybe, but yeah. yeah. No, really, really nice job. This queen... Vita and everyone else, it's overloaded right now. This knight, I should say, is overloaded because it has to defend its other knight and its queen, right? So, you know, I do notice that I wouldn't say this is maybe like the hardest, hardest puzzle in the world, but I find even in my own blitz games, like and my students' games, sometimes we're very quick to to move without noticing these things. And I've learned from National Master Dan Heisman, who has some great books on getting your game better that you don't have to solve puzzles that grandmaster um you know world for, like magnus carlson is solving i think what you should do is solve lots of problems that are quick to keep your pattern recognition good and so that when you are in like a a time battle you see these things right jen like i used to think for students i had to give them the hardest puzzles but Honestly, it's just developing a sense that like right now is where you got to find that tactic and not just brushing it over because in a game, no one's sitting next to you and saying, hey, Veda, because you've just um, participated so beautifully. <laughs> like there is a win right now. No one's going to do that. So that's kind of my feeling about the forcing move idea. Anyway, so if they take, obvious, right? And if they don't, right, you can just, uh, you just want a piece. Like sometimes it's as simple as that. I think you know, we want to just like find, you know, the checkmate, like here, you're just up a full bishop. It's like pretty good stuff, right? So excellent. Yay. Any, and if there's any questions, please like ask in the chat or um, like unmute, um, trying to make sure I reach everyone today. All right. No. I, I was excited about this one. Um, just because I like, I figured, I, I don't know if this was over some, like, I'm a, I'm a 90s kid, so I don't know if you remember that commercial, The Order Matters, like the lottery, where the guy wakes up and he, like, eats breakfast, then showers, in, and then goes to work. I don't know. Maybe it was lost in translation. <laughs> but, yeah. Does anyone remember that commercial? Okay. Well, I do. And it's, like, in chess, The Order Matters, right? So, in this position, there's, a like, they've just played pawn to be five here, right? Um, and it's your turn, right? You need to think what's the best order for me to come out e either not losing anything or, or, or maintaining, all right? So take a moment here. Your opponent just played B5. You're playing the white pieces. What are you going to do? And it matters. These kind of little things, right? If we brush them over and move instantly, we can find that our position goes from even to like, objectively like much worse right i don't want to say lost because even at the highest levels we've seen it you know there's always a comeback right but save your pieces those are your pieces <laughs> so yeah talk to me in chat i'll try to notice if the chat you know if we're getting more answers and i'll look so it looks like rook takes it oh that was the old problem okay we'll figure it out so anyways here black has just played b5 attacking this bishop right if you instantly move, right, then you lose a pawn. And maybe you're like, what? And we're all different levels. If you haven't played your first tournament here, I know some of my students haven't. Like, a pawn is, a, is just a pawn, maybe. But no, you see how weak the white king is now, right? And you're in, like, some deep trouble. Like, you're in trouble here. So it's really important to, like, pause and think, what are my options, right? So if you can just eliminate that bishop, right? Then you have a moment to take a deep breath and bring your bishop back, right? And they can't win your pawn anymore. That was the purpose of this one. All right, I want to go to... 
a puzzle where my husband wins, okay? My husband plays chess. I used to be better than Sean, and I'm unfortunately, like, I have a pretty terrible record as of the last year or two. I'll blame it on all the dishwashing if he's watching. I don't think he is. I think he's hanging out with my kids today. Anyway, long story short, maybe 2024 is my year to get my game back. Anyway, he beat me. Yeah, Jen, right? We've chatted about that. So anyway, um, I was playing, um, let me split the board here. And you know what? I like to tell my students that for real, like the only way to get better, unfortunately, I believe is to lose. Because if you win every game, how are you getting better, right? You're, you're playing someone too easy. That's why if you're playing on Chess Kid, if some of my students are here, they want to win on the easier bots, play the harder bots, right? At least, right? Anyway, black to move. I missed a tactic here. Go ahead and see how your, co your coach for the day, Coach Laura, loses. And that's okay, because next time I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so black to move, a sim you know, the queen and knight are highlighted here. That's fine. I want you to see like, the you know, you, you can't let anything slide. You got to protect all your pieces more than once as the, at the higher levels, right? Just not enough anymore to just sort of protect something, right? Oh, I see a hand raised. Devanshi, do you want to answer? Yes. Yes, so I think that the answer is rook takes d6. Because you're up an exchange already. Ooh. So after queen takes d6, and the material seems even, but then the queen's overloaded from protecting the bishop and the knight. So you can just do queen takes g5, and you're up a piece. Can I just first say your notation is so, so strong, amazing. I know these are a really advanced class. I'm really excited to see that you notice that overprotected, um, the, it's, it's, um, the queen is overworked here. She, you know, it can't do everything. My only wondering, Devanchi, is if rook, can I show you something? If rook takes bishop, yes. right? The yeah. only thing I'm noticing is that, do you see what white can do here? They can take on BA. Yeah. So really strong, like, ideas there. Maybe, let me give you a little hint, and that's for everyone. Yay, I finally are getting some puzzles that are not as, as obvious, right? So let me take all these arrows out. If I can. Good. Okay. So that's an intro. And I'm really, I want to say that everyone watching, you know, forcing moves, you've got to consider, you've got to consider all of them. So keep doing that Devanchi and everyone. Do you see a way to take advantage of that? This poor queen is overworked. You, you, you see that. Can you like bother this queen? Can you make a threat on this queen? Can you attack her? That's for everyone. Oh, I see a hand raised. Tanvi, can I see your name right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I would play rook b5 because you're attacking the knight and the bishop still. That's, that's what my husband played against me on chess.com and he won. Very good. He, I didn't, I thought that my queen was doing fine. My king saved, like I checked all my boxes, but I didn't really notice that there was this threat. Um, And then, you know, I can do something like this, and then I lose my knight, right? I think there's one other line that I tried in the game. Did I do this? Yeah, and I just lost I lost a lot of material there. Nice job, everyone. So in this position, my student, he's an adult learner. He his name is Jens. And I really I I've shouted him out. I asked him if I could use him. And I always ask for my course, may I use your name or do you prefer anonymous? And he's like, Yeah, go for it. So I'm like, awesome. So he told, he sent me a lot of games where either he won or lost because of a forcing move that was a threat. And threats are my, honestly, at this point, I'm like, I'm really excited to find the threats because checks, we can look at all the checks at this level, right? Like you can pretty much scan your checks and captures, but threats does take more um, experience and practice makes progress, right? So it's black to move here. I want you to think definitely write it in the chat if someone doesn't want to see the chat i think you can just if you're trying to solve it at your own time i think you can just not look at the chat i think on my screen i'm not looking at chat i'm just have the the, the screen up so he I, he played a really nice move here um and it might seem obvious but one threat is stronger than the other i see one hand should i give more time jen or 
go for Devon. She's got some is on fire. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. You can call on her again so you can get to a couple oh, more. Let me see. Let me see. Someone I just want to make sure I'm not missing someone's hand. I'm sorry. I'm trying to navigate the Zoom here. I think I see Tanvi and um also Violet, maybe Violet because she's chatting with me. So and Deepta and Violet are both chatting with me. So you could also call on one of them. Indita, do you want to tell us what you're thinking here? If it's your turn, what you'll play as black to move? Queen C6 attacking the bishop and the pawn on G2, Ooh. um, which is a double attack. I will give you, if I'm savvy enough, a little reaction. Where is my reaction key? I can't find it, but I'm giving you big thumbs up. Hooray, 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 hooray. Question for you and everyone. Why is Queen C6 so much better than... Queen G4, doesn't it also, doesn't Queen G4 also make a threat? Threats are threats? Let me see the hands raised. Devanchi, why is Queen C6 better than this other alternative? Because the thing is with Queen G4, you are only making one threat, which white can easily defend because they don't have to worry about anything else. But with Queen C6, you are not only threatening checkmate, but also the bishop, which is hanging on C5. So wow. the checkmate... <laughs> yeah, that was so well. So, yeah. I'm, I'm like, I'm having such a great time, Jen. I'm so, so honored to be here. Like you, you, a lot of you should be teaching chess classes. I mean that, that was said so clearly the idea of this double, the, you know, one threat versus two, right? So as you improve your game, you need to challenge, don't compare yourself to others, compare yourself to your own brain and say, I see one good move, but is there a better move? Beautiful. And he played this move. And then, you know, you got to save your king and then you lose a bishop. I don't believe there was any way to save both. Now, sometimes, you know, if this pesky pawn wasn't there, the queen could save both, right? Okay, really nice job. All right, um, I'm going to do this one next. This move, okay, threat chapter, yeah. So I wrote, I try to make the titles a little witty. Um, I I've really enjoyed um, my own chess journey lately through Chessable. I love watching Grandmaster Simon Williams' courses because he's funny. Um, my humor, I have a tough crowd. I'm like, trying to make it funny, but some of these jokes are like from when I was younger because <laughs> the new generation. But anyway, um, I wrote this threat chapter, forcing moves for beginners, mousetrap. I mean, another type of threat. So here, you know, I want you to think you're playing white in this position, right? There's no obvious, like, look at me. There's a, like, there are a couple of checks and captures. Feel free to look at those. But I want you to think what you would play here. Go ahead and write in the chat to Jen or um, to, I can't check chat right now. So yeah, do you see the the idea? Go ahead or un, or raise your hand. And think, what would you, something I try with some of my students who are just, try, they're doing great, but they're just at that point where they, they can see, they're, they're trying to figure out what they want in a position, but then how to get it. Remember, if you're like, what am I looking for? Just give yourself a moment to like dream. Like if I could just have what I wanted in this position, what would it be? And then how do I get there? Right. Cause you might be like, oh, I can go. I see your hand. Um, Devanchi, amazing. I just want to give people a little time, right? If there's anyone who's like, thinking here, like, what would I do? I don't see the answer coach Laura is asking for. That's okay. I'm trying to challenge you. So it's like, okay, obviously checks, there's only one check. And does it seem that great? Not really, right? They're just going to capture us. There's no follow-up, right? So let's, that's process of elimination. I don't want to do that. Are there any captures? Well, knight takes d4 doesn't look too great either. The queen will grab the knight. All right. So we, if there's no good checks and captures, think, can I create a threat? And then that's for you to do. Anyone in chat beside? Okay, I'll give Devanchi, help us out. What are you thinking? So like you've mentioned of a dream position, if I could get Bishop C1 to Ooh. actually be a queen trap, that would be really nice. Oh yeah. unfortunately the queen will just go back to yeah. like B6 or B5 and then yeah. Like, yeah. So I want to try and block the queen from the go using the B file. So mm -hmm. I go bishop B3, cutting off the queen. 
I'm like, sure, that, like, black can try bishop takes a3, but they're one move too slow because bishop <laughs> c1 and, like, you're just trapping the queen. Close. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. And can I just celebrate the fact that you're not just saying one move? A lot of my students who are learning, they just say, oh, the answer is this. But you, but I love the way you're already looking a couple moves ahead. But just be mindful that the rook is defended by the queen, right? So you're on to something. Before I say more, let me erase these um, arrows. I seem to struggle with that. There I go. Deep Thud, did you want to add on anything before I kind of spill the beans, let the cat out the bag? Go ahead. Bishop b3 is the move because I want to trap the queen. If um, black did bishop takes a3, um, we can do rook a2, trapping the queen. Yeah, very good. Celebrate. Big thumbs up. You all did amazing. That took some nice teamwork. So let me see if I can just use the arrow so you can see like, yep, bishop b3 with the threat, not of bishop c1. That is not the threat here, but it is the threat rook a2. And if they go knight, I guess I just put that random move in. Sometimes that's the key. And then rook a2, and then you just want a queen. And like, they do have some material. Another little word of wisdom, because again, I've been playing chess since I was five but really seriously since i was six and i'm gonna be 35 next month so almost three decades even when you're winning that's another whole topic and even i'm learning like just because you're winning doesn't mean you won right so even though you have more points here you've got to still like be be mindful pay attention to their threats and then convert you know try to win stuff and make another queen um, Jen, I'm having so much fun. I'm not keeping an eye on the time. How many more minutes do I have? You have another, you have another eight minutes. So plenty of time to show another example or two. And just don't forget um, to join. It seems like uh, we have a lot of people who are in the class, but haven't joined the tournament yet, which is fine if that's what you want to do. But it is a good opportunity to win Laura's course and also to get us. I mean, honestly, the biggest benefit of playing these tournaments is you get analysis by me and Laura live, which is really valuable because you can then watch it later. Like we'll leave you, give you the link to the replay so you can see what we were saying about your games. It's kind of pretty valuable. So I would recommend you join. Um, and Laura, yeah, I think you have time for at least one more, maybe yeah. one more and then some questions. Maybe do just one more and some questions. Okay, love that, Jen. I just wanted to say I have a couple of my students here who might not know how to join, but they're probably not in your club, right? It's too late probably, right? No, it's not too late. They can join. I'll put the link, I'll put that link in the chat where they just have to join the cross cultural girls and club. It's on chess.com, right? Yeah. Some of my and students are a little younger, but that's cool. If, oh, if they can't yeah. play, if they don't have a chess.com account, um, well, this is exciting they can, just they can watch. You yeah. can watch and if you and if you are my student and you're like, oh, I wish I could play, don't worry. You can we can get you, we can talk to your families and maybe get you a chess.com account. I think a lot of them are now starting to get ready for the big, the big leagues. Exciting times. Okay. So yeah, if you don't join, you should definitely watch and listen to Jen's um Jen. I'm, I'm she's very modest. She's a, a really strong player and like an I'm learning to commentate, but she finds the 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 key parts of positions that will help you when you do play your next game. So I have one more chance. Okay. Well, I'm going to try this. Oh, they saw it. Oops. <laughs> Give me a second. All right. Let me try a different one. Sorry, friends. Let's do this one. We had been chatting about Jen before we got started, right? So this is a capture sequence. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of background in the position. As you probably imagine, the white knight has just landed on C6, right? And it's attacking this queen. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want to say too much because it's our final one of today. I've had such a great time working with you, and it's an honor. Um, but, yeah, I just kind of want to give you that space to just think. Um, I'll be um, – we'll keep an eye on the chat. And just talk to us about what you're thinking, even if – Raise your hand to do a think aloud. That's also helpful for you and other students. So I'm going to give some space. I'm going to give about half a minute for everyone to think. What would you be thinking about if you're the black pieces here and your opponent just played knight to c6? You know, and this is, again, this isn't like what they say is rocket science, but like 
it's interesting, like unless you're becoming an international master or a grandmaster, which I know you all will in the future, if that's what your dream is and you put the time into it, you absolutely can. But even if you're trying to get to 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, 1,800, right? That levels, you just need to fo- do a ton of practice on forcing moves and how it, adv- you know, intermediate counting, um, advanced calculation where you're just like, visualizing the captures right so i'm gonna give Devanchi a chance oh i'm sorry yeah go for it i only see what your name and then another raised hand but after you if someone else wants to add on that's beautiful go ahead Devanchi. if you still are so, yeah i'm here yeah. Mm-hmm. so i think that the answer is knight takes c3 because okay. now we are also attacking their queen mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. If they try and take our queen, we will take their queen. And if they use either rook to capture on d1, we will use our rook to capture on d8. And we would be up a piece. That's beautiful, yes. And again, as I mentioned, maybe not the hardest puzzle in that tricky book your coach gave you or you gave yourself, right? If you're a self-learner. But these are the kind of things that are going to happen a lot. And you can, I'm going to try to actually find more examples like this that are a little harder for my next, you know, my next lessons that you, you all have inspired me to do. But yeah, like you win and let me just backtrack there for our friends who might be like one move at a time right now. So I win a knight, you win a queen, I win a queen, I'm up a knight. As you mentioned beautifully, if you take me, I take you and I'm up a piece. That's huge, right? And if um, if if they wanna escape to that one safe square, this is my last question, I think, before I give it, I'll sh- stop sharing and anyone who has any questions, happy to answer. Um, what would you play here um, for black? You can also write it in the chat. I'll see if the chat got bigger and then I can look at it. Where can um, that black knight safely escape? Go ahead, Devanchi. Thanks for helping. Yeah, no problem. It is knight to c3. That's the only safe square. Yeah. And I know that, like, when I first started chess, I actually used to think it was better to do things like this. I'm sure you're nodding your head or in your brain. You're like, oh, I've seen people do that, right? But, like, usually, not always. Remember, chess is a mix of, it's not like, well, you can, that's another discussion, right? Is chess math? Is it art? But there's more than one answer in chess. And I can't say always, right? But, like, here, you're losing, you're winning a pawn and a rook, but you're losing your two pieces, right? And there are except times when that's that's good. But here, I believe, you know, just save that knight. And now you're up a full bishop. Amazing. Well, feel free to ask any questions about Laura's presentation in the chat, guys, because I also you're not eligible for the free courses if you don't join the tournament. So that is uh, could be an incentive as well. I know some people have really good reasons like Laurel is in Spain and the reception's not good enough. So we totally get it that you might not be able to play. But if you do, there is that extra incentive that you might get her course, which, as you can see, is um, really awesome. So uh, Let's see if we can get one more people to join. One more person. One more person. Do it, do it, do it. Uh, you can even join one round late. That's okay. Yeah. We'll let you be eligible for that. Good luck, everyone. And yeah, the best way to improve is prog- practice, 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 practice. Yeah, and, and feel free to put the link to the course in your in your in in the chat if you want, Laurel. Um, just because I think that way, if they people do not win the course, they have another option to uh, check it out. And there's some things that you can watch, I think, for free, right? Like a little preview or whatnot. Yeah, there's the peek inside. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So are you guys able to see my screen? Yeah, I see it's, um, yeah, Maki Maureen versus Nyan Kerry. Good luck, everyone. Yeah, good luck, everyone. We got a London here, Laurel. So. Oh. Um, so much everyone has their opinion on the poor London system, but I'm a I'm a I'm a supporter. Well, yeah, maybe you can adopt my kid just because he went to a chess camp. He's six years old and then he went to a chess camp a few weeks ago and he came home and he said, Mommy, will you teach me the London? Oh, you probably I, were not thrilled. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what happened? Who's I gonna know. Die? <laughs> But uh, no, of course I, of course I support my son even when even when he pursues an intellectual interest. 
<laughs> that is love it. So love it to me. <laughs> Listen, as one, how about the idea that you can play more than one, right? Let me, I'll be in the, I'll be watching in a second. Let me see what I'm doing here. So let's see, so far a pretty well played game. Um, let's see, castles, rookie one, c5, bishop c2. I'm pretty um, impressed so far by black's play. I think black has gotten a really nice equality here. Maybe I would say even in a little bit of an advantage even because I like that they had, right. yeah. And also I'm wondering about this move queen takes queen because you are acquiescing the only um, open file on the board. I, I think I would not do that. Queen e2. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's tricky because I'm starting to feel like like black <laughs> is a lot better because if we play queen e2, you know, we do, we B4 do have a war happens. Yeah, you're right. That's space advantage. Now the C file is on, is a little bit, precarious for us there yeah exactly um so i i can understand queen takes the eight but yeah black has definitely gotten the the better of this especially considering the fact that they have black because usually it's supposed to be the other way around but okay i like this idea rook d4 um trying to get a foothold but boy oh boy it feels like black might have some kind of win here with b4 and this bishop being unprotected like what, what about b4 right away why Ooh, that's a nice i would yeah a threat i'm gonna throw this in my next uh course <laughs> yeah i mean it, i Beautiful. think it's i think it's winning unless knight e4 saves the day does knight e4 happen to save the day with the idea that if rook c2 there's knight takes f6 in this hang Ooh, that is beautiful that yeah. is good, yeah i mean there might be enough play but at the same time um Okay, so it seems like she did lose, uh, but instead they played bishop takes f3 instead. And after g takes f3, they played e5. Oh, that's, yeah, that's even better. Yeah, so that's and it. now that's there's no allow. tricks that d8 rook is solid. There's no stress that the knight leaves, yeah. Yeah, you're right, Laura. It is a great example for your book because the, the first thing I looked at, I don't know who Neon Curl is, uh, but the first thing is that, let us know in the chat who you are, but I, the first thing I looked at was B4, because to me it's more, I don't know, it pops up to me first. Maybe I'm become more of a pin girl, you know? I feel like everybody has those tactics that like pop into the rain work. Like, yeah. like, like for me, it's kind of like pins, but I feel like for other people it's double attack. And uh, they saw this one first and it turned out it was the right one. And that's why candidate moves is so important. Yes. Isn't that so interesting? Like something looks good and we want to just settle for, like, and good job. That's a uh, deep that says she's knee on curl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, let's look at the other games, but yeah, it's like some things I feel like we're sometimes biased to certain types of tactics and you know, bias is not great because it means it's good in a way that you're able to be good at pins, but it's also like, not good if you therefore see every problem as you know the expression if all you have is a hammer every problem is a nail yes, i is, agree on that yeah <laughs> if all you have is a pin or a double attack then all you see is that it's funny actually because in my book play like a champion i was looking at games from certain players and i did notice that some players had like a lot of the same tactics like uh for instance uh, alexander botez i had a chapter on her and yeah. i saw like she, discover it attacks kept popping up in her games oh yeah and i yeah. wonder that's good self-assessment you know like if you're noticing that's what i'm good at on chess.com you can do puzzles on a different theme you know yes that's true they do do that in chess.com yeah mm -hmm. um okay let's take a look at this game with violet with the white pieces playing against kind chirpy bird and it looks like it's actually completely even material am i yeah. right but black has an advantage potentially with this rook, although, yeah, let's see. It really depends. Like if white gets pawn a4, then what, right? Yeah, well, right now right, I it's black's move. It's black's move. You're right. Mm -hmm. It right. is black's move. So they need to figure out whether they, they want to, whether they can capture the pawn. Yeah, yeah. All right, so that game, and then what else? Oh, why do I keep going? Okay, so what else do we have? We have that game. We've got, okay, knight takes b6. Knight takes b6, and we've got um, a, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say that name out loud, but 
the grandpa, I'll just say grandpa against mm -hmm. knowledge 99. Um, well, it looks like black is up a piece. So that's good. Let's see. How did that happen? So Bishop Let's opening, see. Bishop mm -hmm. opening is cool. Uh, you know, honestly, if I'm going to play the bishop's opening and my opponent's just going to play h6, I honestly probably going to try to get a four in because like that's one of the main Loss purposes of a tempo, right? Yeah. One, one of the main purposes of the bishop c4 is that like sometimes if your opponent messes around, you can actually play like a king's gambit style without all the risk because they don't have the tempi that they would normally have. I'm so, calculating that f4, e takes f, bishop takes f4, would I go d5 or something? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good point. The D5 is a bit of a pain in the butt, um, but I'm just saying I'm, I would try to play it more. Yeah. If I can get it in and not pay the price, then my position is really nice. But you are you are right that this could be- I've just been, what's that saying now that you got me on sayings with the hand, that saying like, um, I don't know, like I've had this happen to me, you know, where I'm like so excited and I, I know I'm a I'm an aggressive style, I guess on the board, um, oh, sometimes it's great. And other times I'm overly competent, you know what I mean? Like too many risks, but that's, you gotta develop your style and then kind of know, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's never bad to just keep developing as well. Um, but, uh, oh, instead, somehow, I just wanted to see where White ended up losing a piece because they were playing, oh, they, they actually just sacrificed the piece. I mean, and I can kind of understand that this is really tempting, but the problem is you've only got two pieces attacking and this is a great defensive move by Black. Knight h7, brilliant move. Keep this in your toolbox because this is something that does come up from time to time, this knight on h7, stopping the knight from coming to g5. And the problem is now you've, you've got nothing because the queen, the big gun is coming into the defense. And when the queen That's comes into the defense, it's just, it's very tough. Very tough. Yeah. That is a cool move that knight take that knight h seven. Cool as a cucumber, that's right. Very nice. And now of course black is winning, nicely done. And I think we're probably off to the next round in a minute. Oh, bunny gambit still playing. Um, Nika Spanakopita with a the big oh. edge here. Nice little try here. Okay, let's see if they see it. Yes. Yep. Hi, Nikki. <laughs> I think Nikki's underrated. I think she just yes, Jen she, will talk. <laughs> I think she just started her tournament or something, or she just started her chess dot com career. Yeah, you know, hard work. Like you know, it's not. I've learned because you know when you're. I don't know. I feel like oh, I'm no. like, oh, this one's talented. It's about who's working, right? Like who's practicing. Very good. It's okay. You know what? You did great, Nikki. I'm proud of you. Good yeah. job, Honey Gambit, too. And that's okay. You know. It is a game of time. I'd love to hear Jen's knowledge of that. Cause as I said, Jen, you've watched the best in comments, right? Like time is such an interesting um, part of the game and it's, you know, you learn from it. Yeah, exactly. It is, it is always difficult um, with the clock and um, good job though. Yeah, I, so proud think, of her. Yeah, she, she definitely played a good game there. Now let's take a look at this game. Ooh, I love these ones. All right, let's see what we're what's what's cracking here. Let's see. I see e oh even material. We got some good openings. Please teach my students who are good who just don't want to listen to my ring. Develop your center. Bring the pieces out. Castle. <laughs> All right, what's going on here? Okay, so e takes, e takes d4 by far the most more popular move here, the one that I'm more familiar with, taking on d4 right away. Um, but I like to look at the openings in the beginning sometimes, um, but instead of e takes d4, they played uh, e5 right away. So apparently this is called the center attack. Um, okay. Uh, and I, I, this one's not as popular because black has this counter move D5, which by the way, if you don't play e double king pawn openings, really important idea because it stakes this claim in the center and allows the knight for a nice square over here. So meeting E5 with D5, allowing on passant is a really important theme that you're going to see a lot in double king pawn openings. Um, yes. So is yeah. this the, this is the position? No, I'm just looking so, at the I'm just looking at the theory. I'm just looking at the theory because I feel like it's always really nice to use these games as an excuse to like, 
learn a little something about an opening I might know not, less about. I um, always find it's hard to teach that D, what you showed there. Yeah, that's so important, Jen. So D5, right? Yeah, D5, great move by Knowledge999. And uh, then they have to see E takes F in their brain, D takes C. Isn't yeah. there some crazy stuff like Queen E2 check, Bishop E6? I don't know. Or yeah, is that I, more? I think you're thinking of the... Oh. Um, a different line. The I map. am. This is not my, this is yeah. not my niche. Yeah. This is, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm a lifelong learning, you know, and this one's worse, I think than that for black, for white, because I think, uh, why is this one even worse? It's a good question. Cause after DC four F takes G seven, doesn't look like it would be the end of the story. But if you look at the, there's only a few games with this and black is like basically won all of them. Ah, uh, I do like those pawns. They're like, I mean, the kings are equally bad. So we can, I, I'm learning that. Like, it's almost like. Let's put no the evaluation on for a second, because I'm kind of curious. Me like, too. yeah, the computer thinks this is horrible also for black. I mean, for white. Um, and I think it's just the development that black has, you know, like after work to G8, um, we just have like really nice development here. That must be why. But OK, anyway, let's get back to their game. Yeah, no, that was cool. Let's see. So wait, how do I turn all this stuff off? Okay, all right, let's just look at the actual game. Um, so knight e4 takes, and we're in, it looks like these players are both really strong, by the way. I was way. gonna say the same thing, like you were not joking, Jen. This is a very strong group. This is a, really a pleasure. All right, let's take a look. So queen a4, attacking the bishop. They see okay. knowledge 99 played rook b5, nice, and then Great. Yeah, these are some interesting positions. Queen D1 was played. I it's hard. These are those positions where it's like, what do I do now, right? Hmm. Yeah, good question. Um I don't like C4 because D takes C and then we don't have time to, to save our rook. We can't do that. Knight D2, okay. And then I mean yeah, I'm just looking for a way to get this knight better. And I'm not a big fan of this knight. I actually come to think of it, maybe D6, I just six, Jen. I love yeah. that move. The idea you sack a pawn. You get that beautiful knight, and now you're going to win either the bishop. Well, what, yeah, queen e8 is almost, or bishop e8. Yep, yep, yep. But, like, that's a terrible bishop, right? Like, look at all those lights. Though All the pawns are blocking it, and that's a backward e pawn. I love it. Yeah, I think this has some some juice to it. Very it's a really interesting, interesting idea. idea. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's a uh, definitely an interesting move, but they they went for something more straightforward. Um, Queen d1 and a4, and then knight d2, trying to improve their piece that way. Um, by the way, e6. The cool thing about chess is that like if you see a tactic like e6, and you're like, you know, I didn't like it. I think I'm going to do something more straightforward. You can always do it later, and I think that's exactly. a key thing about looking at all the forcing moves. You don't necessarily have to play them all right away. Yeah. But once you look at them, it kind of, it's in your brain as a pattern and the, it kind of stays with you the rest of the game. Because I think actually E6 here might be even stronger because now if queen takes, we have like bishop wow. h Wow, that's nice. And- I, think, yeah. I don't know, I wonder what they evaluate. Can I see that? Yeah, that and then, I believe you, yeah. Oh, you think see, actually letting them... Um, yeah, it's one of those things I've seen some strong players not be worried. I mean, I'm wondering, yeah. what does chess.com say? That the the eval, if you're watching and you're new to chess.com, I have a couple students that might not have seen this before. You see the bar that Jen has here? Can you point to that so they can see the eval? Yeah, so it's not that winning, right? True, it's just true. Like better, but not winning. Yeah, good point. Good point. So yeah, but that's that's the thing. Like E6 should be in your toolbox, but it doesn't mean you need to play it. Okay, but on the other hand, Black thinks that if you don't do something like that, like if you just knight do two, that actually black is better. Okay, interesting. Let's see why. But um Bishop C2, interesting move to just play Rook C2, Rook takes B3. Huh. I, I like the creativity, but at the same time, I'm wondering, I like the creativity, but I'm just wondering if it's the best move because. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Like sometimes we want to be fancy, you know, it is, it tactically might be sound, but I like that Bishop on G6 in this position. It's a, doesn't that seem like a strong piece? It does. At the same time, I can see the temptation though. Yeah. Because this knight is now attacking the bishop, and if the bishop goes here, Ooh, you're right. Like, it gets buried. Oi, that's where chess is like the game—not so hard to learn, but a, a a lifetime to master. Because 
It's those types of things, wondering which piece would be in a worse position. You have to make these decisions, you know? Yeah, tough one. Um, Black decided to play bishop c2 and um, rook c2, rook takes b3. Uh, the problem is that bishop d2, I think the problem is that this bishop ends up becoming a bit of a lemon anyway. So despite Black's like creative efforts, it's not clear that that's going to change. But rook at b8, I like it, okay. Queen g4, king h8. Oh, nice defensive move. She saw that bishop takes h6 was on the menu, right? Taking again, I told you earlier, I'm yeah. all the pins. I'm yeah, all the you're pins. a pin. You love the pins. I I like pins. I don't know what, I like double attacks a lot. I love yeah. double attacks. That's my fave. Well, that's a good one to be your favorite because I, a lot of people, <laughs> that's the underpinning of under, I, I used the word pin by accident there, underpinning. A lot of people think that double attack underpins all chess tactics. Um, you know, oh. I think Yasser Sarawan first said that to me in a broadcast. He said that all tactics are double attacks. Interesting. Like, Whoa, brain, what's it called? Like, wow, like never thought of that. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, what? But that, he, he, what he said, if you really think about it, it makes some sense. Because like a skewer, you're basically attacking two pieces. A pin, there's two pieces that are under attack. It's always more than one. Yeah. I've never yeah. been said that. Sim I like that. Can I use that? Thank you. Yeah. So of course. Weird. Of course. The question, is, the question with tactics and and stuff like that is always like, what's useful? Is it useful to have all these different names for things so that you're able to kind of like see them more quickly because you have a name for it, or is it more useful to see them all as the same? And I think it really just depends on the person. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, for me, I think that having different names for things is better because the patterns kind of pop up at you that way. But mm -hmm. I want to take a look at this game because it's fascinating. So the this is wonderful. I wonder, I would love to hear from them in the chat if they're down. Like, was E6 something um, Neon Curry was thinking of, you know? Or was it something to avoid? Well, now, still playing. So, yeah. Wait, still playing. Yeah. But yeah. It's a beautiful really game. It's just a really dynamic game by both sides, you know? Yeah, very well played. But now I think that um, pawns are even, but I'm a little concerned. I don't. I feel like Black's D pawn is a is very very venomous. And then she also made this nice move F six. Ooh, they're the so center. strong. These are positional moves and tactics. Wow. I'm and now she had a choice. Of it. I was she getting can... tactical. So <laughs> tactical. That's that's an expression. That's a new one. So bishop takes f4 check is I'm more, tactic. but mm -hmm. she actually thinks it's even better to play g5. So I wow. love that. What is that? That is amazing. Look at that. They, you know, bishop bishop g3, though, might have saved something, and then pawn takes, rook takes, bishop, something like a, what's it, a desperado? Like, to just clear the lines, but I don't know. But I think that white would be losing that. The yeah. Just too yeah. much, yeah. So oh, uh, look at the time, Jen. It's still a game. Let's see. see that? Yeah, yeah, this is definitely a game. Three minutes. Oh my God. Whoa. They're both like on to the wow. final seconds. This is amazing. Sorry, I'm so loud. You just mute me. But I'm excited. I mean, this is why we play chess. This is the excitement of it. Let's see if White can win this end game. It's up a pawn. Oh, it was a draw by repetition. Wow. wow. Oh, what a game. What a beautiful, game. instructive game. Great job. Very interesting game. Really well played game for a five minute game. And, you know, obviously knowledge 99, very underrated. Um, by the way, Lashen, I wanted to know if you had any comments because uh, I know uh, you were also wearing your chest of all shirt and watching these games. Do, do feel free to chime in if you have any comments about the games or the process. Yeah, I think these girls are extremely strong players. I've watched them in the previous sessions um, as well. And yeah, the chase is very strong. Um, yeah, the game is amazing. I wish we had more players though, but um, but yeah, it's amazing chess by these girls. And they're so young. So it's good to see. It's good this to see incredible. all of this. I agree. Well, yeah. I heard that the Kenya girls are playing the youth championship today. So yes. yeah, no Bernice. Bernice and um, Elizabeth and uh, the, those ones are um, were our regulars. Faith, 
Yeah. Uh, but uh, Lishan, also, can you tell us where you hail from? I'm from Namibia, all the way from That's Namibia. That's what I thought. But I am currently in Atlanta, Georgia, so I'm just here like on vacation. So, yeah. Oh, that's great! Welcome, welcome. Is it your first? Is it your first trip to United States? It is. It is wow. my first trip. Oh, that's yeah. so great! <laughs> where, where, where are you from in Namibia? Are, are you the capital Vintuk? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. What can you tell us? You know, we've talked so much about Kenya in our sessions, but we haven't talked about Namibia as much, even though I think we have a number of Namibian um, participants as well. Yeah, we do have a number, although like most of them couldn't be here today as well. Um, but yeah, Namibia is a good, is a very beautiful place. I would like for you guys to visit sometime. Um, they say it's a vast but empty place, or yeah, vast but yeah, empty because we have such big land, but wow. our population is only like two point eight million. So, yeah, very beautiful country. Your country is how many people? Two point eight million. In the in the whole country, really? I thought it was more. Wow, oh, it's a very small country. Okay, way yeah. smaller than Kenya. Yeah, way smaller than Kenya. Ah, okay. Wow. All right. Um, and the capital has uh, by far the most number of people then? That is right, yes. Yeah. Um, very interesting game here, by the way. I love the dragon. And the... Oh, this is your thing, Jen. <laughs> the yes. Sicilian player. And this is an, I don't know my Sicilians anymore. Got to get back on it. This is a hyper-accelerated version. So, like, castles is a good move here, but then you might get into like the very, the very, very sharp lines of the Yugoslav attack where White Castle is queenside. So because of that, Black tried to play queen a5 instead to kind of like mix it up. And now let me just pop on the Explorer because I would have probably, in my, in my usage, I usually just play, um, I usually just play castles and go for that line. But uh, queen a5 is also a move. And I, I do think that white has to be a little careful there. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, because unfortunately, if you try to transpose with f3 right now, um, black played queen b4, which I think is a really good move. Ooh, yeah. That's a little opening trap thing, because we're attacking this, we're attacking this. And unfortunately, if you just play the logical bishop b3, there's like a knight e4 idea. Yeah, that's coming back. Yeah. Yeah, and I and uh, black is the better of this. It's not like totally winning because you are winning a pawn, but I'm looking at like knight takes c six. Is that even no? Well, that's a good question. So you're saying like in this position after knight takes e four, knight yep. takes right here, yeah. But then um, There's again, probably... these count these capturing sequences are yeah can be very advanced. Just wow. bishop takes c three with a that check. I think. I think that's the problem. Just bishop takes c three with a check, and you're you're gonna lose material at the end of the day, right? Yeah, that's well, a nice move. Well, we should look though. We should look because I guess I'm looking. Is the bar not there anymore? I love that bar. It just shows. Oh, sure. I'll put it back on. I'll put it back on because we're looking at the past anyway. So it's not like Yay. Thank here. You. But yeah, it is a little messy because obviously, well, nothing's really obvious here. So I should probably stop saying that. But if King F1, I could just like take this, you know, and then I'm obviously totally winning because um, if you take, I'm taking this. And oh, never mind. I have to look at Bishop D4. But I don't think it works because of. Um, 92 check. Right. 92. That's 92. beautiful. That's, yeah. that's, that, that's a, a blocking interference. Interference. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So uh, queen takes c3 check. Um, but what about king e2? It's not that obvious. Because now if I take on c6, you take on e4, and I'm up a bunch of pawns, but I'm down a piece. But here's the thing. Oh, yeah. Takes with this pawn. Is probably the deal because now if pawn takes e4, there's bishop g4 check. Ooh, that's scary. So you can't take there. So again, you you got to try this this move. And um, I'm just making this up as I get along, go along, Laura. I'm like, I'm enjoying. This is just my. This is fun because like, like, it looked. I know what you meant by queen b4 with the knight takes e4, but I've seen you know in the. Yeah, Bert once, you know, it's like knight takes c6. You're like, it looks like it should win for black, but does it? Like, it's like, I mean, yeah. You know. Well, the bar says now that black is still winning, but I have no idea why. I mean, this move Wait, looks good to me. Point what? Eight? What is, what, but what's black's move here? I don't see it. Who sees it? Black to move. In oh, way. no. I have no idea. Oh, oh, I know. You're not threatening bishop takes c3 because it's knight takes c3. Yeah. So what, like um, castles? 
Freeze. That's amazing. Just I don't know. I don't know. There. Like here it is. No, no, that's not what it is. Uh, the, the computer has something that they like here and I don't know what it is. Um, mm -hmm. what, what do you guys think? Ah, uh, I don't know. Somebody in the chat saying something. Maybe um, E5 says Veda. Maybe E5 forcing the issue. Ooh, that is what they like. Wow. Good job, Veda. Wow. Forcing because now you can't take here because then we just take with the queen. So that forces bishop takes c3. And my idea of knight c3, now we trade everything off and we're up like two pawns, right? Two? Yeah. Yep. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So this is why tacticians like the dragon, guys. Because I feel it's like so it's fun. Been like. Like, I will say it, like, this type of learning, I got to tell you, it is more fun than a London. It just is, right? Like. Exactly. We have so I will playing, give right? you that. But then <laughs> when you're on the board, when you're on the board and you're playing white and you can just go D4, like, I've done it, so I have to be real. But this is what chess is, honestly, right? That's what the excitement of the game. All the different options, right? Where you don't get that in such a system opening, yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I, and I'm just so I'm just so happy that we have that on re record, Laura. Oh yeah, you can you can split that. It's true. It's true. I can't. I'm bored of the London. But again, I'm not a competitor right now, so it's easy. Okay, so let's see. So yeah, black is like crushing here basically because um, late great game by black. Wow, just really well played. But are they going to actually win? Because white has more time, and they also have you know. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Here yeah. you have to play what? Like, I, it's so hard because we say activate the rooks, but you have to defend. Yeah. Yeah, within reason, though. Like, you within activate. Within reason, exactly. Yeah. You activate the rooks, but you, right here, you're up a pawn, and this pawn is also a linchpin for so many of the other pawns. Yes. So, yeah, you, you don't want to just give it away. Um, so, rook c5, unfortunately, just kind of. I get, I, I totally understand what Black was thinking, that they were thinking they needed to be active, but remember that principles are only principles because it mean, it's true most of the time. Yeah. It's not true always, you know? And what you know what another important principle is? It's that material is good and, you know, you want to rack up the points that we learn when we're little kids, right? Yeah, can't forget um, that. Yeah, so uh, unfortunately that was a critical mistake, but I, one thing I think is important is you know, there's this philosophy that you learn more from your losses and your wins. And while that's true, I, th I sometimes think learning from your wins is neglected, oh. both in life and in chess. Oh. And so white clearly was not as prepared as black in the opening there, but they won the game anyway. So that's like- They gotta go game. back and check that out, right? Yeah, that's a really good opportunity to, um, to to check it out later. By the way, speaking of Namibia, we've got a, a player from Namibia who just joined Lishen. She joined, I think, one round late, maybe. Um, Jamie Cole, she's a women's candidate master. So let's take a look at her game then. And she's actually playing against somebody from Botswana, who uh, I'm not sure we've had her in the class before. Um, but Jamie, uh, let's see, maybe her internet is not connected because so far she hasn't played a move. So let's move to another game. Hopefully she gets signed in. Yes, yeah, um, the internet is quite bad because she's, I think she's on a farm or something. So the mom did say that she was having some difficulties with connection. So that might, that might be the problem. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Well, let's take a look at Violet and Neon Curl then. Um, we'll keep an eye on that one though. Um, it looks like we've got a Queen's Gambit declined. Uh, yeah. So last time Neon played the black side against uh, D4, she got a really nice game. And it does feel like she's pretty well prepared here. Yeah, this nice, solid play playing for C5. Really yeah. nice. Let's see if there's any other interesting games here. Oh, Israel. OK, yeah, I remember we had a player from Israel in an earlier event. Is it, or is that one of your students, Laura? Lenoir? No, it's just so cool to see so many. It's truly, from, we're all from everywhere today. This is amazing. Yeah. Well, this is a time of day that's often- it's a good, good time, for, right? To, a lot yeah. of time zones, a lot of time zones are good for this. So I, I think it's not so good for like India and China, but other than that, like uh, Europe, uh, Africa, Israel, um, America, Pacific time zone. It's good for a lot of time zones, but yeah, 
I know, I know that China and America are two of the hardest ones to match up because I did commentary for the world <laughs> championships oh, yes. taking place in China. And I woke up at two in the morning to do oh, it. Oh my goodness. That's pretty cool. Okay. Attitude yeah. set of skills, right? Getting yeah. so ready at that time. Oh, and my wonderful goodness. husband woke up to Aww. bring me a cup of coffee because Aww. he knew that I might oversleep. So that was so get the coffee. And he did go back to sleep though. <laughs> oh. All okay. right, so what do we have here? So Bunny Gambit seems like they're playing really well here, just picking up the pawns. Okay. Now I will say these type of positions, not to be the underdog, but I feel like I've not to like sometimes you'll lose, but like there is chances for white here. That bishop on C, you know, that's a good move, you know? And then working with that that diagonal, the A1 to H8 diagonal. I feel like at the low, like at, there's a lot of potential. You get a queen battery there, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be, you gotta be careful here, and and that's why, like sometimes when you're analyzing with the computer and you're like, oh look at the bar, black's totally winning. But you yeah, know, yeah, but it's it's not one yeah. till it's one. Yeah. Especially when there's queens on the board. That's what I I say to a lot of people. Especially, I mean, I think the players here are more intermediate and advanced. Yeah. But even but, so, I mean, it's yeah. relevant. I think you know. Yeah, because even intermediate and advanced players, when you're playing blitz, it often turns into a mess and having a queen and having the ability to just threaten these checkmates on the dark players can make things a little bit more interesting. Now, I would, I know, I would, queen a six checks a possibility, but they just took right away. Um, now I think there's a tactic here where it takes, oh, I shouldn't say, because they could hear. Um, also, I'll mention it after. I mentioned it to after, but uh, I, there's, I think there's a tactical idea here for- You found that quick, Jen. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, I was looking at that just to get, the, well, it happened, right? So I was looking at that just to get checks, but that's more than just a check. That's a double <laughs> attack. It's always a double attack, according to Yasser. He's right. I upper, upper <laughs> buff also wrote that. Yeah, okay. But, White, keeping the checks on. Very nicely played by the Bunny Gambit. Good stuff. And I will move on to another game since Black just up a whole rook here. Let's see. Um, what's this one? This one is Nika Spanakapita. Whoa. Nikki. Nikki. I got a smile from her. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Interesting Remember. position. Very interesting position here. This is one of your students, sorry, Tay Nikki. Yeah. Well, yeah. Not to put her on, not to give her any, you know, she's doing great. Um, you know how it is when your coach is, I'm not looking, no. <laughs> I'm looking at chat. You do you. <laughs> she's doing great, yeah. I'll let you do the chit chat, Jen, so she doesn't get. Yeah, well, here we have a. What opening was this? Was it, I'm sure it was. Scotch game. Scotch okay. game, yeah. yeah. We, can look, we can look quickly at the opening. Oh, nice move. Yeah. Nice whatever meeting. works, whatever you think is best for the our students, you know? I like this. Good stuff. Okay, I'm not sure about this knight f3 move, though. Is this a thing? I don't think this is a thing. Yeah, maybe better to bring out a new piece. Maybe something simple like bishop, what, e2? I don't know. Well, even like knight a3 here, I don't think is the main, yeah. right? Knight, knight a, uh, yeah, let's look at the opening real quick. So after knight g7, there's a lot of games from this, but mostly bishop c4. So like knight a3 is not, not played. Okay, that's what it was. So knight a3 though is creative. You know, I, I like the creativity. I mean, I think this is a move worth looking at. Never mm -hmm. played it before, but you know, you can understand her logic. This knight is developed, and if you developed it to d2, it would just hang up on. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Beautiful logic. I mean, actually, when I saw this, I thought this might be theory because it looks so logical. And I don't play uh, the scotch. So to me, I was like, yeah. oh, it's like grandmaster theory. So well done to Nikki for finding something creative. But Very knight f3, I think that's a problem because now our. The doubles. Yeah. But again, I always remind, you know, a lot of a lot of the students, it's like, this is not grandmaster. You're not playing a grandmaster. You might be playing a 1700, though, in this tournament. <laughs> and, and also, I think tournament. I think her idea here, you know what? I Maybe I spoke too soon because the idea here is actually pretty, pretty interesting because it's actually not. I, the queen I assume, on F6 is a little out of play. Yeah, we yeah. can actually defend this that easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is actually pretty interesting. Huh. 
Um, okay. I really like the creativity that White showed in this game. I mean, this is pretty astonishing, actually. Uh, and okay. This is tough, right? Like maybe Castle Queenside could have been nice. What do you think? Yeah. Or too risky. Or like. Mm hmm. I like that better than sticking the king on F2. Although I, I understand the king F2 also, she's hoping the king will be safe because there's- Make a I call it makeshift castling, but someone told me they call it something different, like castle by hand, I think. I okay. call it makeshift castling, like- Castling hand, yeah, that's what I use, but- DIY, yeah, like do it yourself, like- <laughs> Yeah, all, all good, all good phrases oh, no, here. Yeah. And now this is where we where we took off, and um, we're kind of looking to see what's going on here. But yeah, White's just up a up a pawn, right? Um, and I wonder if Black maybe should have tried harder to keep Queens on the board because they have uh, a safer. Yeah, was F five so, interesting or no? Well, F five right away maybe. Yeah, I, I would definitely consider it. But if they can just kind of bypass our ideas, E5 by five stronger, five, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but definitely worth considering. But I think the key thing there is you let's skip to the game because I'm curious. OK, well, White is obviously winning now. But I think the key thing there when I when I say that I don't want to trade queens is black is just it's just based on logic, which is something that Pontus Carlson, Grandmaster Pontus Carlson, who's not here today, but who co-hosts these sessions very frequently. Uh, logic is key in chess. And it's just like our king is safer. Your king is not safe, but you have a better structure and you're even up a pawn. So it's very, very clear here that Black does not want to trade queens. Yeah. I mean, it's just logic. Your king's bad and you're up a pawn. All those things are that are good in the end game, right? Having a centralized king is good in the end game. Having an extra pawn is really good in the end game. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's interesting? I always thought to say when I was teaching that when you're up, trade. But then I was with Luciana Morales and her co-author, Ian Harris. They did a beautiful chessable course, the Queens of the Chessboard. And he told me something that stuck with me. Once you get to this level, sorry, I'm talking, this is a key position. They're still playing. But anyway, once you get to the higher levels, like this kind of group, it's kind of like trade, but be more mindful about what you're trading to. Like not just trade everything when you're up or down. Like which pieces do you want to trade? So I agree. I think that's really smart. And by the way, her testable course is fantastic too. It is. I'm learning from you and her all the stuff I should have learned as a young girl. And I'm excited. You know, it's so great. Now we have all that content that's so necessary. Yay. Yeah. And by the way, congrats to the winners. We got Neon Curl, Bunny Gambit. Neon Curl, clear first with three and a half out of four. Very nice tournament. And I think, was that, who was that again? Was it Devanchi? Let me take a picture. Um, it's Dita. Yes. Oh, that's you? Yes. Ah, and that's your mom's name, Devanchi. Okay. So so how was the tournament for you, Disa? Um, it was good. Oh Deepa. It was fun. Oh Deepa. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were I thought you said you were Devanchi. Okay, Deepa Devanchi I think is knowledge ninety nine, is that right? Yes. Oh, okay, you're knowledge ninety nine and Deepa was the winner. Yeah, um Deepa, tell us more. So you were the one who struggled with the, the Sicilian but ended up winning the game anyway, right? Yeah, I was actually losing by a pawn, but then I got it back. Yeah, that's an opening trap, Deepza. And I, I was saying after that, like it's it's like um, when you lose it, when you lose the opening battle like that, but win the game anyway, um, you get the best of both worlds because you get to learn from the opening, um, but you didn't even lose the game. So that's a reminder that maybe your dragons are a little weak. You need to like kind of tighten up those dragons because there's so many different ways for opponent to play the dragon. Um, let me just use this as an analysis board. Uh, this was your last game against Violet. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to look at that. But like e4, c5, knight f3, there's so many different ways to play the dragon. The traditional way is to play d6 right away and then play the dragon here. And then, um, you know, you can play your Yugoslav attack. But there's other ways too. They could play the accelerated dragon, which starts with knight c6. And they could play the hyper accelerated dragon, which starts with g6. So yeah, just a good reminder to kind of like tighten up those ideas. Um, because one of the things when you play with white, you get the first move, but your opponent often knows their opening better than you do. So that's something to think about when you play the white pieces. Because one thing I noticed is that your positions were black were really good. But maybe with white, you know, when you see, when you have a blitz game and you don't get a good position with white, you start tightening up that repertoire with white. 
Yeah, actually, I play um, Dragon is Black also, but I wasn't so familiar with the Queen A5 line. Okay, well, there you go. How many other Dragon players do we have here? And by the way, do we have any final questions? Because I think um, Laura, in addition to being an amazing chess player and school teacher and coach, is also a mom of three children. So <laughs> I think she does need to go in a couple of minutes. Um, but if there's any final burning questions for Laura, yeah, uh, let okay, us know. Okay. Yeah. Any any burning questions for Laura? I'm Let's an open start. book. I got Turn one. Thirty five next month. <laughs> Violet says, "Good job, thanks, Violet." I think we, it's been a while since I've seen you, Violet. Great to see you. Oh, Headed to college quite thank soon. Thank you so much for being here. Well, yes. Um, great job, everyone. Says Siri. Yes, thank you um, to all of you as well. And I'll get those chessable courses to the winners. Be sure to like send me your email if you don't mind, or your chessable handle. Um, just because I get a little confused otherwise because everybody's names are different on every different site. So uh, Bunny, Nikki, and Neon, um, you know, get those to me. And it sounds like Nikki's your student, Laura. Yeah, I was going to say, um, yes. If, if she already has the course, we could get her something different potentially. She, so. I did gift it to her. She's been an amazing student. Very proud of you, um, Nikki, and all of you today. So, yes, yeah, she has my course. Okay, so we'll figure something out. Jen, right. I would be happy to buy your new book and gift it to her. Oh, yeah, Play Like a Champion. Well, it'll be out in a couple months, yes. So I'm I'll sure. buy that for her and her family. They're great. <laughs> oh, wonderful, yes. Okay. Well, you've got a game in it. So does Veda. So does yeah. Michael. So does uh, um, Bernice, who's not here today. I think um, there's a position by Elizabeth Cassidy. I'm so excited. The book really does have like a combination of the games of like the absolute world champions of all time. And then also just some like really cool people who are good at trials. That's the great thing about the game. Yay. Like we can all enjoy playing beautiful tactics if we work hard, even if we don't become the world champion, we can have our moments of glory on the board, right? Absolutely. And with that, I thank you all. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And um, yeah, on behalf of Laurel and Lishen and the, the Cross-Cultural Club, we are um, gonna sign off. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Jen. And I'm so excited I was able to join you guys today. Thank you for this honor. It's been amazing. Had so much fun. Yes, you were great as always. Bye everyone. Bye, Maureen. Bye everyone. Bye, Siri. Bye. Bye.